I head up the union's organising and English department. Um, and with me this afternoon is Desi Henderson, um, who also works in the organising and English department. Um, you should have in front of you a plastic uh, wallet that looks like this. Colleagues, can you all hear Sharon? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are you alright? Okay, you should have a plastic wallet that looks like this. Um, yeah. And I just want you to take out the bargaining data document please that I'm going to be referring to as we go through. Can you pass one down? I'll just wait for you to get that. Have you got that right? Yeah? No? Okay. Should be a new can you just do one between two and I'll make sure you get another one? Okay, can everybody see one? Perfect. Okay, great, thanks very much. Um, so what we're going to try and do is in this sort of next 15 minutes, and I'll try and keep it as brief as possible so we don't have to overrun, is just to officially launch, um, on behalf of Unite, our industrial data, uh, our industrial database. Um, we have, for the past 18 months, been drawing together information for the 40,000 workplaces where Unite is in, uh, for the 10,000 recognition agreements uh, where we have recognition with employers, and for the 181 national agreements. It's the first time this has been attempted in Europe, definitely, on this scale, uh, maybe further, further afield than that. Um, but it's taken 18 months to, on the regions of uh, sent stuff through, stewards have sent stuff through, and we're able today to launch this with you uh, and obviously get you to access that. So I just want to talk a little bit about it. Um, we are at this point in time, drawing together the information so that you as stewards and negotiators know, and our officers know, that when we're going into workplaces and negotiating, that you are able to know what else has been won in the sector that you're in, what else has been won in sectors that have a bearing on your sector for the first time. Um, so the database, by every single workplace, will have the anniversary date of pay, so that we know when we're negotiating, uh, in all, across all of the union, and what we've won on behalf of our members, so that we can begin to identify where we're not winning and begin to put support into those uh, particular areas. So by the end of this session, you will have that password, you'll be able to go in, and I'll talk you through how you do that. And obviously, I hope that you'll be looking at it and, and pushing us to make it even better. Um, but before I take you through the data, um, I just want to say a couple of things about the broad industrial strategy. And I have been around the regions, we've been at the sector conferences, I've been at the regional committees, talking about the launch of Unite's broad industrial strategy. Um, and I think behind me there should be a slide up that is relatively uh, self-evident, that uh, collective bargaining has declined and living standards in real terms also has declined, which is something that you're seeing and obviously we're seeing. But the main reason, as well as that, that we wanted to launch a broad industrial strategy was to make sure that no one was in any doubt what Unite the Union is. We are a union that represents workers as our first task, that we win for workers as our first task, and the idea of the broad industrial strategy is to make sure that everybody, every worker knows what we stand for. Yes, we have other things that we do and that's important and no one's suggesting that isn't, but our focus must be in the workplace, it's where our power comes from, and the broad industrial strategy is re-emphasising uh, some of those uh, principles. The other reason why we wanted to uh, have a refocus around the broad industrial strategy was that a lot of our campaigns in the past have been very particular and they're very important campaigns. Uh, we have one about the real living wage at the moment. That's a very important campaign, and no one's suggesting we shouldn't do a campaign of that type. We must do those campaigns. But we wanted to make sure that all of our 20 sectors could lock into a broad industrial strategy. If you are in a sector where you're getting paid higher than the real living wage, then you are unlikely to plug into that particular campaign. So this was really about saying we're a union of 1.4 million, we have, we have 20 sectors, and we are fighting in different shapes and forms in all of these workplaces for similar things, but just at different levels. And I'll just talk a little bit um, about that. Um, you can see as we move on to uh, the next slide that part of what we're trying to do in the strategy is to regenerate Unite's industrial brand. That's what you're doing out there every day. That's
that's what the officers are doing out there every day. And we want to make sure that that message is getting out there, that we are an industrial organisation, we win for workers, and our main task is what we see before us when we walk into um, the workplace. Um, again, very briefly, because of time, I just wanted to refresh our memories on the three themes of the board industrial strategy. Um, and hopefully you can see them behind me. Secure work, a strong voice, and decent pay and conditions. Um, and you can see there that we are reiterating that we want every worker, not just Unite members, that when somebody hears the name Unite, they know that we stand for making sure that workers are secure in their employment, that they have a strong voice when they're at work, and that we fight for decent pay and conditions on a daily basis. So they know that's what we do, um, and that's the brand uh, that we have. Um, now, because of time, and I want to get you into the data so you can obviously uh, be able to access that, I'm just going to take one thing from each of the themes just to give a bit of a flavour of how we want to make sure this runs across all of the sectors. Um, so if I take uh, the piece around secure work, um, you should see coming up there a number of things um, that we would associate with secure work. Um, it's not exhaustive, I'm sure you've got lots of other things that you would put in there. The one that I just want to draw out is great for the job. Um, and it doesn't matter whether I'm working in energy, or I'm working in food, or I'm working in hospitality. If somebody comes in and does my job for a penny less, then I am being undercut. And so the principle of rate for the job is a key tenant of uh, secure work, and it's part of the discussions um, that we're going to be having as I come around the regions in the latter part of the year. The second theme of the board industrial strategy was a strong voice. Um, and again, I'll just pick out two things from what I could say around um, what we're fighting for in terms of a strong voice in workplaces. It's evident, um, if there is no recognition in a workplace, then the first part of those workers getting a strong voice is when they collectivise and they become union. And so therefore it's very clear to see that where there is no recognition, a recognition agreement is the first step for those workers really getting a strong voice at, at work. But what we're also saying in the broad industrial strategy is that if you're in automotive, if you're in energy, if you're in aerospace, and you have good facilities, you have good agreements. What else can we push in order to re-emphasise and push forward that strong voice? A stake in the future, a seat at the table. And the idea is that every sector is linking into that part of the broad industrial strategy and everyone's pushing up. Um, so that it doesn't matter which sector we are in, that we're pushing up and striving forward for even better terms and conditions and obviously a better, stronger voice at work. And the final theme on the uh, broad industrial strategy before I now take you into the data is decent pay and conditions. And again, there's a huge number of things that you fight for every day that comes under decent pay and conditions. But I just want to focus on one of those, um, which is the employer's ability to pay. And there are some guides that you've got in front of you. I'm not going to talk about them today because of time. But one of the things that we have done quite detailed work on is around an employer's ability to pay. We may have said, you know, some years ago, we may even say in the recent past, that if we got RPI for workers, that actually that's quite a good deal. They're not taking a pay cut, they're getting uh, inflation. But if the employer's making profit after profit after profit every year, and we're just keeping up with inflation, then their piece of the pie is getting bigger, and our piece of the pie is getting smaller. And so in the decent pay and conditions piece, there's a lot of work in the guides around ability to pay, how you access research in relation to that, and how we can assist where you, you want us to in terms of um, ongoing uh, negotiations. And I'm now going to uh, take you into the data so you know what we have got and what's there already. It's the beginning part of what we're trying to do, the end game of this is that you have a proper industrial database that we're able to go in and say what is the best agreement in automotive, what is the best facilities agreement in energy, so that we all of us can use those um, agreements across the whole um, of the union. Um, but for this part I just want to take you in what we've got so far. So in the document that 
you have. I just ask you to go to page five of the document. And, and information will, will come up on the screen behind me. So um, obviously, if you want to look at the screen, that's fine. Or look at the document itself. It will come in both uh, areas. So just to reiterate what is in the data, um, the 10,000 Unite agreements, um, in terms of the workplaces where we are, we will now be able to see that in the data that I'm just about to show you. The 40,000 workplaces where Unite is present, you'll be able to see that in the data that I'm going to show you. The 181 national agreements, uh, you will be able to see in the data. And you will also be able to begin to see, although we haven't finished this task yet, um, the unrecognised areas in your sectors where we have cluster members of 10 or more. So that we can see where are the areas where we do not have union organisation and what is the pay in those particular places, because they will be the places that will be undercutting you as we move uh, through uh, the years ahead. Um, the data is in four phases, and I just want to say something about each of the phases. The first phase of the data that we uploaded was attaching it to all of the 100% campaigns. And, and there are 15,000 100% campaigns on the system, and people will be aware that the idea of the 100% campaigns is not just to get a few more members in every workplace. It's to make every Unite workplace strike credit. Um, and whether you go on strike, that is for you to decide. But we want to have the best density, the full complement of stewards, um, the uh, contact, communication structure, everything in place. That if you needed to go on strike, then that would be uh, what your workplace would look like. <coughs> so the first part of the data was attaching to the 100% campaigns where we're going in and building density and a union anniversary date of pay and the last percentage of pay increase. And we have around about 98% of that data in from the regions. Our biggest region, the London Eastern region, has 100% of that data in. So you can see that we're in the room. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble with the region now, aren't I? Um, okay, so uh, the, second, <laughs> the second phase of the data um, is uh, effectively where all officers' allocations are going now up on the system. Um, and so this is not just where we have 100% campaigns, but moving us into the 40,000 workplaces where Unite has recognition. And um, the third phase of the data is, as I said, unrecognised workplaces. And the final stage, which I, I, I hope to be uh, in, a, in a position to be looking at in January, is where we pour into this data where we are not. Um, if you take road transport, commercial logistics, for example, where we are, we've got very good density. You know, very good density, good workplaces, good agreements for the most part. But there are employers that we are not recognised in, and it's important that we know who those employers are, because, as I say, they will be the people that will be undercutting us in the future. Okay, so we're now going to move into the data itself. So um, we should see, and you will see on page five, but you should see behind me, um, if now you log into Unite's homepage, so www.uniteunion.org, um, you will, you will, this is what you will see. And across the top, you'll see five different tags, um, and the last of those tags is Workplace Pay. So as you go into the website, and then you click on Workplace Pay, you will then see the information that you see on the top of page six, or, uh, as you can see, uh, in, on the screens. So, you will be welcomed by, you will see the message from the General Secretary, and then on the left-hand side, you can see that there are four key bullet points. One talks about guides, which I'll come back to in a moment, pay and anniversary date information, which I will also talk to you about, Unite Agreements, and Growing Our Union, which is a slightly uh, separate section. Once you click onto the guides, uh, which Desi will do now, um, you will then get the screen that you see behind me and on the bottom of page six. So these are the five guides that we have produced in relation to pay, talking about the ability to pay, uh, in talking about the research that you can access, campaigning on pay, recognition, facilities, and 
and agency work at minimum standards templates. We're also doing one for apprenticeships. What does a good apprenticeship agreement look like with a matrix uh, attached to that? And the idea of these guides is to say that this is the UNITE standard. If we're having recognition in a workplace, then we want the standards to be like this, you know, at the bottom floor. Obviously, if you've got better agreements, if you're, the way that you do your pay claim is better than the guides, then throw them in the bin, because obviously you do better uh, than what the guides say. Um, but what we're trying to do is lift the floor, um, so that we're giving support to those workplaces where maybe they haven't got uh, those things in place to make sure that those don't become the workplaces that undercut uh, some of our other agreements. When you go into the guide section, you don't need a password. And so if you go into uh, Workforce Pay, you go into the guide section, you're able to open the guides, you can download them in PDF or as a Word document. So if you, you obviously uh, can fill in your employer's name if you want to use uh, in a particular negotiation. Um, we then move on to page 7 of the, of the guide itself, um, and uh, you can see also page 7 is on the screen behind me. And we now get into the industrial data, which we're, as I say, at the very uh, beginning of. So if you log into um, Workvoice Pay, you will see the screen that comes up uh, on page 7, and you, will, you press on login. And so all stewards and officers will be able to access into this particular screen. Um, and if you then move on to page eight of the guide, um, you, should, you will see what the template you see at the top there, where you're asked for your username and you are asked for your password. By the end of the session today, every delegate who is a steward and rep, or everybody in the room who is a steward and rep, um, will be issued with a password, either on the organising and leakage stand, or we will come to you and give those out to you individually. You all have an individual password, which is your membership number in the main, um, and there is a second password, sorry, that's the login, there's a second password that you can change to something that's more familiar to you. Um, so you log in, you use your password, this is for officers and for stewards and reps only. Um, and then once you've logged in, you will see the um, detail that is on the bottom of page eight and also on the screen uh, behind me. Um, we're advising uh, that when you log in to the pay anniversary data, that you click on the easy search, uh, because it's a quick way just to get you in for some of the very uh, basic searches. I'll talk about the other searches uh, in a moment. So once you've clicked in on search on page eight, uh, you then at the top of page nine, and hopefully on the screen, will see an open dialogue box that you see there. You just simply press on the open box, it enables, and then you get to what I think is going to be hugely important for me when I'm uh, doing the work that I do, for you doing the work that you do, uh, in terms of being able to search the 40,000 workplaces, the 10,000 agreements, the 181 national agreements. So you will see come up the employer name, the region, the sector, and the postcode. So to give you an example, um, if I wanted to search Northern Grid, for example, I would just put in the, the employer's name, and it would list, which I'll come to in a second, all of the, uh, all of the areas uh, within Northern Grid that's on the system. I'll come back to that. But what I think is really important that this also does is on the postcode, if you put in a particular postcode, um, you will be able to see what will be percentage pay increases in a geographical area. And I think this is really important around Unite Premiums, what is Unite Winning for members in particular parts of the country, but it's also important so you can see uh, what's happening uh, in the location where you are. So you can search by employer, employer by region, by sector, you can see there the different ways of doing that. If I ask you now to move on to page 10 of, the, um, of, of, your, of your guide, you can see on your guide you've got a slightly different uh, piece of information than you have on the slide. And I'll come to the slide in a moment. So for the purposes of the guide on page 10, we put in uh, Northern Power Grid, and you can see what drops down when you put in Northern Power Grid. Effect effectively, you'll see the employer, you'll see the region, you'll see the workplace, you will see the postcode, and crucially, you will see the name of the officer. Um, so that you will know, if you are negotiating in Wales, the name of the officer for your organisation in another region 
uh, and you'll be able to access that. You'll also see the name of the Regional Coordinating Officer. Critically, you will see the anniversary date of pay, and this is very important, I'll come back to that in a second. You'll see the last percentage pay increase, and you will see whether or not this particular site of this particular company has been recognition. So a Y denotes it has, and an N uh, denotes that it hasn't, essentially. Um, on the slide behind me, uh, we've put in two sisters, uh, and I'll come back to caveats in a moment, we've put in two sisters, and the reason that I've done that is because the anniversary dates of pay in this company are different. Um, now, what I hope is going to happen is that stewards get together within companies, obviously in the first instance, but on combines, on sector combines, on cross sector combines, to talk about anniversary dates of pay. If there are anniversary dates of pay that are different because that's how you want it to be, then that's great and fine because it's your decision. If it's because we just didn't know, then of course that's a whole different discussion. And maybe uh, you would want to be talking about uh, harmonising some of those uh, where you see where you see that to be appropriate. I've already mentioned um, on page 11 um, of the uh, guide, and also if you can see that, you'll see it up there, that where there is no negotiation, you'll see an end. Now I just want to give a couple of caveats to the information. It's been 18 months in pulling it together. It is undoubtedly not going to be perfect. Um, you know, we're pulling together 40,000 different pieces of information. The regions have done a phenomenal job across all of the regions. Um, and we have got a very good density of this information already in. But there will be, I'm sure, problems with it. For example, if there's been a two-year pay deal, we might have had somebody send in year one of that two-year deal and somebody send in year two of that two-year deal. As we go through the forthcoming months, and particularly as we go into 2017, the system will show the current year. So what in 2017 was the pay deal for this particular company or the outcome of pay in this particular company? And you'll be able to see two concurrent years at any one time. And as we go you know, into five, six, seven, eight, nine years, there will be banks and you'll be able to get a report in terms of that. If any of the information is not correct, and I expect some of it not to be correct because of the size and task that we're having before us, then it's simply you just let your regional officer know, or if you get your password, um, the organising and leverage department are um, uploading some of this information at the moment. You'll just get one person's name, send in your data, and we'll effectively uh, change that for you. Um, if you now move on to page 12 um, of, the, uh, of the guide, um, there is another way to search. I just want to talk you through this very briefly, but just so you have this. Um, you can also search by your sector. So in the guide, we searched um, power, uh, Northern Power Green Energy and Utilities. On the slide, uh, we've searched automotive, um, has been the sector that we wanted to look into, and we put Vauxhall into the search engine, and that's effectively dropped down those workplaces, officer, anniversary rates of pay, last percentage pay increase, and obviously whether we recognise in all of those, in all of those uh, particular sites. Um, the two outstanding areas, which I'm really hoping that, the, you know, that stewards are using this, that you're correcting it, that you're you know, using it for negotiations, and once we've got this piece sorted, um, we basically want to then move into trying to get the agreements up. There are around about 400 agreements on this system at the moment, uh, because obviously they're coming in and some areas we just don't have the agreements, uh, you know, physically. Um, when we get to the point of having, you know, the majority of agreements on this system, you know, what we want it to be able to do is you can ask it anything. You can ask, as I said, what's the best facilities agreement in automotive, but we can actually interrogate the data. We can interrogate, you know, what is the best pay increase in X. If you're in a, a sector where you have multiple, for example, if I take finance, where you might have a pay pot of 2%, and therefore that actually means not an awful lot because most people won't have got 2%, some people will have got nothing, um, then for those type of situations, I will do, uh, you can effectively... <laughs> Thank you very much.